welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, a place where I interview tech leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, futurists, technologists, thought leaders, and even the occasional celebrity about how they are leveraging technology to transform their business. And today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Alan Jacobson, Chief Data and Analytics Officer at Alteryx. And we're going to be talking about driving key data initiatives and accelerating digital business transformation, and also learn a little bit more about his backstory. He currently leads the company's data science practice as best-in-class example of how a company can get a maximum leverage out of its data and the insights that it contains. He's also responsible for data management and governance, product and internal data, and the use of the Alteryx platform that drives continued growth. But he also has a variety of leadership roles under his belt. Previously, he was at the Ford Motor Company, across engineering, marketing, sales, new business development, and was even recognised as a top leader in the global automotive industry as Automotive Hall of Fame Leadership and Excellence Award winner. Not to mention Outstanding Engineer of the Year Award. So I think he's got somewhat of a backstory too that I'm looking forward to learning more about. So with that scene perfectly set, I'm going to ask you to buckle up and hold tight because no matter where you're listening in the world right now, it's time for me to beam your ears all the way to Detroit where Alan is going to share his story and also discuss why so many businesses are stuck on the AI hamster wheel and also explain why nearly 80% of organisations do not trust or even use their own analytic insights for decision making. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure, Neil. Uh, My name is Alan Jacobson. I'm the Chief Data and Analytic Officer at Alteryx. That encompasses, uh, I guess, a couple of different roles. The the first is I get to play with data. I get to use data to help drive our business forward and help democratize analytics across Alteryx, hopefully in the end, helping our our customers and helping our product teams and HR teams, all, all different functions, become more analytically driven. The second role that that I get to play is is helping customers go on the journey. Um, and so you know, most of our customers are really trying to drive to become more analytically mature and use their data more effectively. And so I spend a fair amount of time with customers, helping them as they, they set out to go on their journey. Love that. And of course, we're recording this right at the beginning of 2023, where everybody's looking forward and excited about the opportunities that could be on the horizon. But I'm going to book that trend. I'm going to go back in time for a moment and ask you, can you remember where your passion for technology originally came from or just a moment that would put you on the path you're on today and how those worlds of data and technology would collide for you? Yeah, it's amazing how there are those moments that kind of change the trajectory that you're on. And yeah. My my moment was, was a long time ago. Um, this may sound crazy, but I think I was seven years old. And my dad brought a personal computer home into our house, which we probably one of the first houses in the neighborhood with a personal computer. He was a college professor. He was going to start teaching uh, students at the university how to, how to program. Um, and he, he brought a computer home with him. And, and he decided he was going to build some software uh, that eventually became a, a commercial a piece of software. And um, he would type or he would write uh, code on a piece of paper and have me type it into this new personal computer. And he thought he was teaching me how to type. And it turns out he was actually teaching me how to program. Um, Seven-year-olds are pretty good at language. And I would actually say I was probably more fluent in basic programming by the time I was eight than I might've been in English because I could write a full program in, uh, in basic, but probably couldn't write a full essay with getting, without getting a lot of red ink from a, from a, from a teacher. And so that was really the beginning of what set off a passion for technology. And, and actually the, the code that I was writing was actually analytic data science type code way back then. Yeah. I've got similar memories from uh, my past as well. I remember my dad buying a computer, he gave me a book and said, copy some of that, that, uh, that code out. I also remember 
the amount of time it took to correct the syntax errors at the end. But uh, hey, that that was debugging before it was called, cool, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but of course, in in your case, the path would lead you to Alteryx. And I did speak with, I think it was Libby Adams l- last year about how Alteryx was unifying analytics, data science, and automated processes, for example. But if anyone that missed that conversation, can you just tell me a little bit more about the company and, and the kind of problems you solve for your customers with your tech? I mean, two things really come to mind. The, the first is that Alteryx is just a phenomenal platform in that it allows you to go end to end with data to solution. So whether you're wrangling and manipulating data or doing geospatial analysis, whether you're trying to do predictive or prescriptive types of extra, just automating a process, Alteryx has all of these capabilities built in. And many analytic folks trying to do these sorts of things end up having to use two and three and four and five different tools um, because each one of those things might be a different tool for them. So having one tool that you can kind of go end to end in the process is really one of its superpowers. But probably more than that, the biggest differentiator, and it's really what attracted me to Alteryx, is the ease of use. Um, Alteryx can be used by anyone. Uh, my kids are Alteryx certified. They're 14 and 16 years old. I think the younger one was 12 when he got his uh, first Alteryx certification. Um, it's it's incredibly easy to use. And I would argue if my kids can get certified in it, there's no knowledge worker out there working at a company with a college education that that, that can't learn analytics and how to automate processes and, and, and use it. And so this ease of use is what's really transforming companies, having huge percentages of workforces now able to take advantage of analytics. So much of companies you know, don't use their data having more people who can can leverage that data and do something with it and get outcomes is is really just fun to see. And I recently came across IDC research, which revealed that over here in the UK, I think it was 60% of businesses are stuck on an AI hamster wheel. I love that line. Really. But it did reveal that 60% still fail to deliver ROI from any data analytics with a lack of training, accessibility, and of course, legacy strategies uh, being the, the core blockers, hindering success for organizations. I can you expand on this and share any insights you might have around these figures too? Yeah. I, so, so first, I think if you take a step back, yeah. um, the experts who know where the, the gold is in your business, they know where the opportunities are, where the waste is. These are your domain experts. Um, it's not your data scientists. I say this as a data scientist. Um, mm. it, it's not your analytic PhD. It's it's your business folks, your tax person, your accountant, your marketing professional, your logistics pro. They know where the waste is in the business. And so the magic of getting ROI is you need to have domain experts who know where the opportunities and the struggles and the waste is sitting to know a little bit about AI and ML and analytics and what it can do so that they can come up with a way to to use the AI and ML to to deliver value. And a lot of people think, well, AI and ML, that sounds like it's out of reach. It's, It's for these double PhDs graduating from Oxford. And the reality is applied AI and ML using models, using analytics is most college professors, when I talk to them, would say, you know, this is like middle school and high school level stuff. Like, I'm not talking about developing an all new algorithm. It's it's using an algorithm and applying it to your business to get to an outcome. This is not terribly advanced. And so it's much easier to take those domain experts and teach them a bit about AI and ML and have them deliver huge value. Um, that's a much more likely way. And it's what I see in a, in practice happening much more frequently by leading companies, uh, then you're going to take a you know the double PhD from Oxford and have them become an expert at your business and have them deliver value. And so it still is important to have data scientists in your business. They, they typically are the teachers and, and they're helping the business kind of deliver these AI ML projects. But at the end of the day, it's how do you take your domain experts and bring them on this journey so that AI and ML are no longer a buzzword. It's just an actual you know, part of the way that people work. And we're seeing this change pretty dramatically um, in schools. Today, if you're a, let's say a business major, it's very likely if you're getting an MBA, 
that you're going to have courses in data science and analytics. You might actually learn how to code in Python, as an example. And so we're seeing professionals, whether you're a logistics pro or whether you're a marketing person or whether you're a finance person, if you're graduating from school today, it's more and more likely that you're starting to have these skills. But the majority of your workforce didn't have that luxury. And so trying to upskill those folks and enable them to get ROI using AI and ML is a huge piece of the equation um, that, that separates the winning companies, the, the folks that are really using this technology well and ones that are still struggling. And this is one of the areas that, that I find myself really scratching my head because with the economic slowdown squeezing digital transformation budgets now more than ever before and projects that fail to provide that quick payback could be at risk of, of pullback even. Yet, despite the strong need for delivering these high ROI business intelligence uh, uh, strategies, nearly 80% of organizations do not even trust their own analytic insights for decision making. And I think something like only 58% actually use them. So th there seems to be a real disconnect here. So so what do you take away from, from stats like this? Yeah, I mean, I think this really, this puts an exclamation point on the on the phrase change is hard yeah. because these same companies know that that analytics and using the data is key to their success they're not too many boardrooms that wouldn't say that and yet so many of them are struggling to go on the journey and and i think it really just comes down to change is hard it's not analytics is hard as i said analytic my, my kids do it like it's not cerebrally uh the most challenging core. I, I found thermodynamics, multidimensional calculus. Like I can name a lot of really hard subjects, but yeah. applied analytics is, is not one that I would put in that category. And so helping people go on that journey and the change management around that, I think is an incredibly important piece of the puzzle. And many companies, you know, struggle to put the appropriate change management processes in place? You know, are they doing analytic days? Are they uh, having TED Talks where people come in and talk about how analytics is making impact? Maybe guest speakers from other organizations coming in. Or how are they exposing their organization uh, to, to have them be ready to go on the journey and excited to go on the journey? And that's incredibly important. It's something I spend a lot of time uh, with with customers doing. And many experts are saying that by 2027, which is getting closer and closer, businesses will see a strong need to deliver AI-generated insights, but also face that clear gap between AI automation roadmaps and the foundational pillars that they need to deliver. So can you tell me more about this and, and any deliverables that, uh, or, or, or expand on those deliverables that are waiting on the horizon? Because uh, we're in 2023. It's getting closer, isn't it? Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, it, and in many ways, I look at this, I'll, I'll first maybe use a, a story of a different profession and a, kind of a different element, because I think there's a, there's a huge parallel to what's happening with analytics and data science. So in marketing, if I rewound the clock 30 years, yeah. you could be the best marketer in the world and know nothing about the internet, because believe it or not, 30 years ago, the internet really wasn't used in business. It was in a defense laboratory at best. And so 30 years ago, you could be the best marketer in the world and not know a thing about the internet. Today, do you know what you call a marketing professional that knows nothing about the internet? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> there <is> probably, <laughs> probably, yeah, probably unemployed or yeah, yeah. retired or like I can come up with a couple of those sorts of words, but that's about it. And, you know, someone once asked me, well, how about the person who does brand color? Like, they don't need to know about the internet. I said, no, actually, digital colors are different than print colors. Like, even that person needs to know something about the internet. 27 years ago, the first article appeared in Business Week magazine about a business application of data science. So we're almost at the 30-year mark for analytics being used in business. And I believe that the day is coming where if you're a knowledge professional, not just a marketer, but if you're a finance person, a logistics person, you name the knowledge professional. Analytics is just kind of a core piece of something you need to know, you know how to use and what it's all about. And so you need to move from a view lookup and a spreadsheet to being able to use more advanced analytic methods um, in order to be 
an employed professional that's adding value to your organization. And so, you know, 2027 isn't far away. And I think it, it really reflects that, that day of reckoning that happened in marketing where you had to know about the internet or you probably wouldn't get a job. Like the same thing is happening when it comes to analytics and AI and ML and automation uh, when it comes to knowledge professionals. Now, look, there are elements that um, help an organization be ready for it. Everyone likes to talk about, well, to use AI and ML, I need good data and my data is too messy. And the reality is data in general is never perfect in the business world. Um, there, there's always a cleanup that could be done, but most data is good enough to be able to drive outcomes. And so it's almost more frequently used as an excuse as to why we're not doing AI and ML than a reality. Because again, leading organizations that use a lot of AI and ML also have dirty data as well. Sometimes they use the AI and ML to help clean up the data. Um, and so again, I think it really comes down to people at the end of the day, um, helping people go on the journey. And from a technology standpoint, finding technologies that aren't aimed at the few, they're technologies that can be used by everyone. So look, there are some technologies in the data science and analytics space that probably will only be used by data scientists. Um, I don't see too many accountants learning to program in Python. Uh, data scientists certainly will likely know how to program in Python. Um, but do you have tools that allow that accountant, allow that person to go beyond the spreadsheet into these more advanced capabilities. And that's, again, where Alteryx, you know, is playing a, a critical role in uh, about half of the global 2000 uh, largest companies in the world is helping people go on that journey. I just wanted to give a quick mention to our sponsors because this month the podcast is brought to you by Flipper, which is the number one marketplace to buy and sell online businesses and startups. So do you run your own online business? And have you ever considered selling your website, your store, your tech, or your app? Because with world-class combined matching technology, dedicated brokers, and end-to-end -end services, all at the most efficient price, Flipper is making it simple to sell your online business. So to get a free valuation, visit my friends at flipper.com slash tech talks, where each month thousands of online business owners exit with Flipper. Again, Visit flipper.com slash tech talks. And I think there'll be many business leaders listening know that they need to do something to stay relevant in the future, but knowing what to do, where to start, that's the bit that's incredibly daunting and overwhelming for them. So for that business leader listening, what should their business be or where should their businesses begin when attempting to remove those legacy roadblocks and, and start to prioritize ROI? Yeah, I, so, so I would say they're kind of, two ways to, to get on the journey. So there's one which is set, setting up, we just have to start. We need everybody to kind of get in the car and start driving towards the destination. So having a, a mandate that, look, we need everyone to know how to automate processes and we need everybody to know how to use analytics and we're going to start on that journey is one mode to very quick ROI. We frequently see companies when they do that in days and weeks they're, they're finding ROI as people begin and start on that journey. So it can happen incredibly fast. The other one is to pick targeted areas where you know that there's waste. And again, this typically comes from your, your domain experts. Um, sometimes organizations use a value engineering approach to look for kind of high value areas where there appear to, it appears to be a high ROI potential at a, at a low effort. Uh, versus a low ROI at a high effort. Um, and so they map out these use cases and pick some of the top use cases and, and go after those as well. And usually if you do both of those things, you'll very quickly deliver a lot of ROI. Um, and that's what we see, again, the most successful companies doing. And I'm curious, when future-proofing business using AI-driven insights, do you think there needs to be more consideration than just simply investing in new technology? Because it's very easy to get distracted by the tech, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, look, certainly you need to, to have technology that's appropriate. If, if everyone yeah. is armed with an abacus, you're probably not going to take advantage of AI and ML very effectively, <laughs> right? So, so certainly technology has a place. But I will also tell you, if I put a box in the corner 
of the world's best technologies. And it said, free, take one. Cost isn't even an object. It's just a box full of tech and it says, free, take one. That by itself will not make transformation happen. People are at the center of it. And so you need a conductor that's helping bring the people of your organization on the journey. And so, you know, are are you putting on a hackathon? Do you have training classes? Are you uh, giving TED Talks that are inspirational and getting people excited? Do you have analytic days showcasing the great work that different people are doing um, and demoing some of the technology that you have in the box? Um, These are all things that are really important. And so I would say people have to be at the center of your strategy and bringing people on this journey. And you need technologies that will help bring those people on the journey. And and that's really at the heart of it. So yeah, technology alone might sound strange talking to somebody coming from a technology company, but technology by itself won't get get you to the finish line. No, I completely with you on that. And I always say every episode on here that technology works best when it brings people together. And just about every guest that's been on here will all reiterate the importance of people. And of course, when we're doom scrolling down our news feeds, we often see more bad news than than good. But in a bit to maybe restore the balance in the universe a little bit, what makes you hopeful about the future and the road ahead? Yeah, so the the change is happening incredibly fast. Um, you know. It seems like every day I meet with another company that just barely started on the journey and already they're just having tremendous, tremendous results. And and whether whether it's in business impact, which we certainly see a ton of that, but I also see human impact, Um, people whose lives are being changed in very positive ways from AI and ML and automation, whether it's a worker who now their time is freed up to do more strategic stuff because they've automated some of the mundane that they they were they were getting home late to have dinner with their families. I, I just actually uh, met with someone who he was almost in tears. He's like, "Where has this been for the last twenty years of my life? This <laughs> this just saves me you know ten twenty hours every week, and I'm going ten and twenty hours every week for over a decade. That's crazy." Um, and so we see those sorts of impacts, but we also see societal impacts where analytics is really helping deliver medicine and, and um, analyze a pandemic and, and, and help alleviate some of the things that are going on there or with you know, transportation and logistics shortages, helping, helping break log jams uh, in, in that arena. And so um, I think the, the future is incredibly bright. The impact uh, is, is really taking hold. And you know, there'll be winners and losers for sure, but uh, AI is certainly helping make more companies able to be a winner. I love that. And we started the podcast today talking about your origin story, what put you on this path. And as we come full circle, I'm now going to ask you to leave us with a book that might have inspired you or, or struck a chord with you that we can add to our Amazon wish list for other listeners to check out. All I ask is, what are you going to leave us with and why? So, I, one of the books that I really enjoy, and actually there, there are several in, in, in the series at this point, um, there's even a podcast with it as well, is the Freakonomics series. Yeah. Um, for those in the data science profession, it's it's hard to imagine not having read uh, Freakonomics, but I, I would urge readers who have not read it to, to take a look. It's uh, certainly interesting and fun uh, ways of seeing the world through data. Awesome. Well, I'll add that to our Amazon wish list. And before I let you go, for listeners just wanting to find out more information about everything that we talked about today or, or how they can contact your team, et cetera, what's the best starting point for everything? Well, I, listeners are more than welcome to connect with me, uh, Alan Jacobson. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, Altrix is, uh, you know, our, our site is www.altrix.com, A-L-T-E-R, alter, Y-X, um, dot com. And hopefully I'll hear from some of your listeners soon. Awesome. Well, I'll have those links to the show notes so people can find you nice and easily. I love chatting with you today, especially around AI roadmaps at risk and 60% of UK businesses struggling to deliver analytics ROI due to those legacy strategies, but also for sharing your insights around finding a way out of that and also sharing your powerful origin story too. And how it all began with your dad giving you that book at a personal computer many years ago. But more than anything, just thanks for sharing your story with me today. Great to be here, Neil.
There was some big stats shared there, wasn't there? The fact that 60% still failed to deliver ROI from data analytics and are almost stuck on an AI hamster wheel. And also that big stat that nearly 80% of organizations do not trust or even use their own analytical insights for decision making. And which blows my mind considering most businesses are chasing after data driven decisions right now. So it seems to me we need to move away from that old school approach to the adoption of analytics and AI where only the very specialised employees can benefit from innovation. Because essentially, what that does is creates a hamster wheel style innovation roadmap, one defined by momentum but lacking in progress. And that research also gives insights into why businesses who fail to break that wheel now could be putting themselves at risk of an AI winter. But this podcast is not just about me and today's guest. It's now time for me to turn the microphone and put it in your direction. I want to hear your insights and experiences and any comments or questions or pictures to come on the show, whatever it might be. I'm the easiest guy in the world to find. So message me now, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, at Neil C. Hughes. We'll keep this conversation going. And I'll also return again tomorrow with another guest on an entirely different topic about how technology is transforming our world. So thank you for listening today. And until next time, Don't be a stranger.